Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm Marta Scalonia. I'm assistant professor at Applied Economics Department at Viedos University. I am an economist, okay? And today I'm going to present a methodology that I implemented last academic year uh, in one of my uh, group of students, okay? And this uh, methodology or presentation is titled Online, online Collaborative Storytelling and Mind Mapping in Bilingual Education, a pilot study to enhance motivation and e-learning of students, okay? So right here, uh, you can see the outline of this presentation. First of all, I'm going to introduce the topic to give you a little bit of context. Then I will explain the primary goals of this methodology. Later, I will focus on the sample to which I implement this uh, method. Uh, final, uh, finally, I'm going to explain the specific inno innovative methodology I implement to my students. And later, I will explain how can I evaluate this method. I mean, is really useful or not? Finally, I will show you the results found with my students. I'm going to discuss them. And of course, I'm going to show you some limitations of this methodology, okay? So first of all, introduction. Recently, more lecturers perceive that there is a change in the values of our students hold in the cl classrooms. More and more students uh, that start a university degree uh, gives more weight to pass a subject or course, okay? Uh, which is generally the only aspect that brings them satisfaction or motivation. This, um, against learning new concepts taught over the course. Unfortunately, this evidence is increasing each new academic year, and that's what I observe each year, new year, okay? Consequently, this translates into th certain apathy of our students towards the learning process at university. So, by teams, in one minute, I want you to think about what, which is the main problem with your students. What can you observe in your students? Which is the main problem? Just a minute. Come in. The, mo the main problem you observe with your students when you are teaching, what can you, you observe? Are they motivated? So, do you find, do you find s similar problems with your students? Do you find similar? Yeah? So, I'm going to tell you my experience with my students in Oviedo, okay? We can observe an scarce participation and motivation, okay? More specifically, we observe a reduction in class attendance. This is very negative in my classes, okay? Well, it's not in my classes, okay? It's for all teachers <laughs> at university, okay? And, uh, of course, we observe an increase in high dropout and failure rates, okay? So, I need to change something, especially in my classes, okay? I, we need to capture students' attention, okay? Capture their attention. How? Using probably uh, innovative tools that motivate them, but they, and they uh, learned at the same time, okay? Uh, of course, we also take into account the ICTs and their important weight nowadays in our daily lives. So we need to introduce uh, methodologies uh, in favor of meaningful and collaborative learning, okay? The educational model that was implemented decades ago in which students are pa a passive part of the learning process no longer works, okay? 
So um, how can we uh, do with this problem? We can use actor learning. Probably most of you know this kind of learning, okay? It enhances students to be involved and teaching, uh, in the teaching learning process and they improve their performance, okay? It does not only motivate it, but they also uh, understand what are they doing, okay? How can we do to promote this kind of learning? By doing different activities, for example, reactions to a video, discussions in small groups, games in class. In this case, I propose to create a podcast in one of my classes, okay? Of course, most of you know what is a podcast, okay? Because nowadays we can find a podcast for several topics, okay? Music, films, health, lifestyle, okay? Uh, the popularity of podcast started in 2006 when it was found, it was found in the literature that um, this kind of activities may improve the professional skills of students, okay? okay? And they introduce them into the digital storytellers. Of course, more and more attention is received nowadays in university and in terms of language, okay, learning, because it was found, found in the literature that when we create a podcast, we can improve our language skills, okay? So it is found that it is an uh, effective tool, okay, to enhance motivation and enjoyment of our students in the classroom. Among their advantages, we can find simplicity and comfort, because nowadays it's very easy to create a podcast, Flexibility and self-paced learning because you gave all the power and all the control to your students in terms of time and space. Motivation, of course, and enjoyment. It enhances or um, uh, it boosts uh, this kind of motivation and enjoyment in the classroom. Despite all these advantages, there is no literature or there are no studies in which uh, authors introduce collaboration at the time to create podcast. okay? And this may be an advantage for students because we try to expand the understanding and the knowledge not only for the individual, but also for the rest of the group or the team, the whole class, okay? Another activity we can do is mind maps. How many of you know where is a mind map? Okay, most of you, <laughs> very good. But when I ask to my students, they don't know what is a mind map, okay? So, uh, of course, this kind of activities may improve learning and the knowledge of our materials or contents, both individually, but also collaboratively, okay? So, of course, uh, it is uh, very useful to create mind maps by groups because sometimes uh, probably there will be a brainstorm. Students uh, have to listen to other viewpoints. Um, they can be more expressive when they share their knowledge. Uh, they can support the ideas with evidence, they may gain trust, okay? So these are some of uh, the advantages of creating a post, uh, mind map by groups, okay? Again, despite all the advantages these two methodologies offer, there are no studies using the combined and intertwined use of podcast and mind maps, okay? So for this reason, I conduct a pilot study to analyze if we can observe changes in terms of motivation and learning in our students when we implement a podcast and mind map, okay? In a small number of students, okay? Enroll in a bilingual course, okay? Later I will explain what is a bilingual course because maybe it's not the same for other countries as in Spain, okay? So the primary goals of this methodology are, I can summarize them 
into two questions. The first question is, to what extent does the combined and interwound use of podcasts and mind maps improve students' engagement and motivation in the e-learning process? I mean, can we observe differences in terms of a students' motivation and learning process? The second question is, are both tools effective for improving learning and language skills? I mean, are they useful for students? Can we observe that these methodologies are positive for the students and for all classes? Also, I include two additional questions. The third question is if we can observe differences by gender. Why? Because there is literature uh, showing that men and women have different learning preferences, and this may affect their perceptions and satisfaction in the course. Okay? For similar reasons, I also ask myself if we can find differences between those students who are enrolled in the course for the first time compared to those who repeat the course because they didn't pass the final exam in the last academic year, okay? How can we observe differences between these two students? Now, the sample, I'm going to divide this, uh, this section into two different subsections, okay? First of all, I'm going to explain the participants in this methodology and then uh, the course or the subject, okay? Regarding the participants, um, I applied these two methodologies in a social science field, more specifically in economics-related degree, okay? The name of the course is this one, the Economics of Spain and the, Europe the European Union. Um, that is taught in the second year of the university degree in business administration and management at University of Oviedo. We applied these two methodologies in a bilingual group during the last academic year, okay? Um, in Spain, we usually, uh, especially in Oviedo, we usually teach in Spanish, okay? So we have several groups uh, taught in Spanish. But for specific courses, we have one or two groups in which lecturers uh, teach in English, okay? And sometimes, most of the, the time, we have Erasmus students in this kind of groups. And we call these groups bilingual group. Is that for that reason, okay? So, um, I am an economist, so I'm going to show you data, because I need data, okay? <laughs> it's impossible for me to not analyze data, okay? So, the sample here consists of 41 students, that is the number of the students enrolled in, this, in that course last academic year, okay? So, right here you can see uh, descriptive data of these uh, enrolled students, okay? As you can see, 56% of our students are female, okay? 85% of the, our students are enrolled for the first time in this course, and 15% of our students are Erasmus students. If I remember well, um, we had uh, students from Turkey, Germany, and Italy, okay? Now, the specific course, I'm gonna give you the main characteristics of this course, because probably you don't have to know uh, the main characteristics of this course, okay? So in this subject, we try to show our students the economic and, polit and political, uh, political logic of the European integration process and to give a basic understanding of the institutional architecture, the current situation, the main problems of the Spanish and the European economies uh, in the early 21st century, okay? In this course, um, we have different uh, sessions. Uh, we divide them into two different sessions, theoretical and practical sessions, and that are complemented by continuous assessment activities, and these activities are developed in practical sessions, okay? Regarding theoretical classes, um, consist of lectures addressing 14 different lectures, okay? 
And right here you can see the different uh, lectures. All are related to the economics of Spain and the European Union. Uh, in this case, um, we try to emph emphasize the Spanish role okay, in the European Union. Regarding practical uh, classes, we try to consolidate the students' knowledge. Okay? In this case, since the implementation of the Bologna's process, uh, evaluation of the students' learning results is based on a writing exam in which students can get a maximum of six points and a continuous assessment activities in which uh, students can get a maximum of four points. Okay? Uh, in these practical classes or sessions, uh, students must have up to 11 evaluable tasks. Okay? And also we include small questionnaires and follow-up questions as continuous assessment method. In these sessions, I'm go uh, my students have to uh, create the podcast and the mind map, okay? Also, both activities are taken into account for the continuous assessment for the students, but they don't know it, okay? So, now I'm going to explain the innovative methodology, okay? This pilot study consists of six different steps, as you can see in this figure, okay? I'm going to explain uh, step by step. The first, in the first step, two weeks earlier the last practical session, my, um, uh, I'm explained to the students the first ta task to achieve the creation of a podcast, okay? It's an activity to be done by teams, okay? And it cannot exceed eight minutes. Okay, its duration must range between four and eight minutes. How can they create a podcast? Using Audacity software, which has this logo, like here, it's completely free, and it's very, very easy to create a podcast, okay? Because with this uh, software, you, you can't import own audios, remove notes, cut um, merge clips, Whatever. Okay, so it's very, easy, it's very easy for students to create a podcast with this software. If we have time, we can try a proof later, okay, with this um, software. Now, it's time to choose team and the topic, okay? Since I had 41 students enrolled in the course, I create uh, seven groups of six, of six students, except in one case that it was composed by five individuals, okay? I distribute male and female students and also Erasmus students. And then, when the teams are created, I give the specific topic for each team, okay? Why? Because in no case two teams are going to have the same topic. Then, teams have two weeks to organize themselves, create the podcast, and submit it into the virtual campus. That in the virtual campus is our e-learning platform, and it's based on Moodle, okay? It's very similar. Um, but this platform, or virtual campus, uh, has an online res uh, resource called Podcast. So I create a podcast with the name Podcast Economics of Spain and the European Union, okay? So in this uh, resource, one of the members of each team have to submit uh, the podcast, okay? Since we had seven groups, they, uh, we will have seven different episodes, okay? And when all episodes are uploaded into the virtual campus, they can be listened by the rest of the teams, okay, or groups. Now, in the last practical session, students must sit with the rest of the members of their teams, and then I explain the next task, that is the creation of the mind map. So what can they do here? In this case, each group will have to listen to the podcast created by other team, and then select the most important and show that information using a mind map, okay? So in this case, they don't have to 
listen their own podcast. They have to listen other one, okay? So they have to listen to other classmates and then select the most important information and then use create a mind map using that information, okay? So this is the main thing here. The mind maps topic changes compared to the podcast topic. That's the main point here, okay? Uh, of course, all teams have to complete the mind map during the last academic, uh, sorry, during the last uh, practical session. And again, they have to submit it into the virtual campus, okay? So all the students can listen to all podcasts and can see all mind maps in the virtual campus, okay? And of course, during the, these last uh, practical sessions, I give them some feedback comments regarding the podcast. And of course, as students were invited to present their opinions. Okay? So, can, uh, how can they create a mind map? In this case, uh, they must uh, use Canva or another application that, if I remember well, is Spanish, Geniali, okay? In this case, most of them use Canva, okay? It's an online graphical tool, it's very easy to use it, to use it but it's very useful, this tool, because it allows instant collaboration between uh, teams, okay? Why? Because the students can share the mind map uh, they are working on via online, and if one member changes something in the mind map, the rest can see the change immediately, instantly, on their computers. Okay, so it's very, very, very useful because they share the link of the mind map. Okay, so right here, this figure shows a visual representation of this methodology. Okay using an, as an example only three teams, okay? So team one has to create a podcast referred to topic one, but its ma map has to be related to podcast created by team three that is referred to topic three. Now, team three create this podcast referred to topic three, but its my map is related to this other podcast created by Team 2. For that reason, at the beginning of this presentation, I told you that this is the, I analyzed the combined and intertwined use of podcast and my map. It's for that reason, okay? Although the teams create only one map, they indirectly make two. Why? Because when you create a podcast, you need like a script. Yes, tell me. Thank you very much. So the idea of podcast is excellent. I, I love it very much. And uh, how do you define the best duration of podcast for your students? Because they come from different cultures and you know, we have quite many short videos on Instagram, YouTube, etc. What's the best in your opinion, like length? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your question because I discuss it with uh, other of my colleagues of this course, okay? Um, we range before, uh, between four and eight because it's more useful to um, listen during a class, okay? Because in my, if, if, if you remember, I told you that the, and they have to create the mind map during the last practical session. So they need time to listen to other podcasts several times because it's difficult to uh, create the mind map when you only listen once, okay, the, the podcast. So for that reason, I mean, you can create a podcast, a uh, 20 minute podcast, okay, for each uh, lecture or for each topic. But it's more difficult for students to listen several times at 20 minutes podcast and then have to create a mind map and be original and fun, okay? So for that reason, we consider that a podcast less for 10 minutes, it's, it's okay. Because my classes last like one hour and 45. But 
most of the times is one hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, any question up to this point? Okay, so I continue. Uh, as I told you, when you create a podcast, um, you have to organize the information and you have to select the most important. If you remember, uh, this podcast cannot exceed uh, eight minutes, okay? So they have to create a script to follow, okay, to create the podcast. And also, it's important to have uh, a better or a well organization of your information when you create a mind map because you have to decide which is the central idea and which is the rest of the information, okay, that are the branches of the mind map. So, uh, how can I evaluate this methodology? I collect information uh, from two different data sources, okay? First of all, um, I carry out an online survey to my students, and I also uh, use different indicators that I will explain them later, okay? Regarding the online survey, I ask them up to 21 questions, okay, to collect information about their experience about these two methodologies, okay? Um, the first nine questions are related to the podcast activity, the, the other nine, this other nine questions are referred to my map, okay, so ask them about their satisfaction, if they consider these activities are original, fun, if they motivate them, if they consider are useful for a study, um, if they have a preference of this activity over the other one, um, very important for later. Their preference of this activity over different activities. When I write different activities, I mean conventional or traditional activities we done over the course, okay? For example, solve an uh, exercise or read a lecture or a reading, okay? And then finally, we also include three open-ended questions, okay? Just to ask our students if they will improve something about the podcast activity or the mind map, or if they would like to introduce new activities that uh, we didn't consider. Now, we also include different indicators. More specifically, we include up to 13 different indicators. Sorry, the table is so big, so I need to divide into three tables, okay? Uh, I introduce five indicators related to the podcast, okay? So the first indicator is participation. Okay, in which I want to analyze the number of people within each team who participate in the creation of the podcast. Okay, the content I want to analyze the adjustment of the contents. Okay, of this podcast, I also evaluate the time duration, the overall fluency, okay, and the creativity and originality of the podcast. I also include four indicators refer to the mind map, again, class attendance, class attendance within the team, okay, the content, and again, the creativity and originality of this activity. And also four indicators related to both activities. For example, uh, the presentation of podcasts and mind maps performance correctly. In this case, I analyze the number of the students who have complete two activities, the average grade of these two activities, if there is any influence of these two activities in the final exam, and uh, influence of these two tools uh, used in the skills related to the subject or the course. I really like, of course, that you uh, you try to uh, to measure creativity or how creative are solutions. But how do you do that? How do you decide what is crea creative or not? Uh, and do students actually know what is creative or not? Thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah, it's very subjective. It's not objective. It's my decision. Okay, but if I show you my ma maps, 
probably you are going to know what is more creative, more cre uh, creative than the other one. Okay. Later, I'm going to show you different uh, mind maps. Okay, and you will decide which is more creativity. But it's completely subjective. Okay. And that's one of the biggest limitations. The same for the online survey results. They are self-reported from my students. And sometimes they, are, they can be biased. Okay. So the results. First of all, I'm going to give you two minutes to discuss in your teams how can you implement these two methodologies in your courses. Okay? If you can. Do you find a way to implement in your courses? Yeah? In which field are you working? In which field are you Okay. In which field are you working? Innovation Okay. 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 It's very diverse. Okay. Very good. And did you find a way to implement these two methodologies? It will be easier or difficult for you. Because it depends, for example, in economics, it depends on the subject. Okay, it's not the same this course, the economics of Spain and European Union, that, for example, microeconomics or econometrics. It's more difficult, okay? But you can find a way to implement this. Okay? And the rest? Do you find? Do you find a way? More or less? Okay. So I'm going to show you now. One of the podcasts created by my teams, one of my the teams. Okay. At the beginning, I told them that they have to present or they have to introduce themselves. Okay. So. Hello, I'm Maria Fidalgo, and I'm with René, Javier, Miguel and Lucia, and we are going to explain Lesson 5, European Competition Policy. First, what is a competition policy? Competition policy is about applying rules to make sure businesses and companies compete fairly with each other. The European Commission monitors and investigates anti-competition practices, mergers and state aid to ensure a level playing field for European businesses, while guaranteeing choice and fair pricing for consumers. Integration creates a pro-competitive effect, which contributes to industrial restructuring. The Commission has all power to regulate the European competition policy, and national authorities cannot oppose Commission decisions. Collusion among firms results in high prices leading to lower the prices of the firms that are part of them by reducing competition. And the problem is that proving these agreements is not easy at all. Exactly. Identifying and breaking up cartels is an important part of the competition policy overseen by antitrust watchdogs in most countries. But, as you just pointed out, the problem is that proving the existence of a cartel is not that easy, as firms are not usually so careless as to put agreements to collude on paper. And one real example. One that was caught? Yeah, one that was caught in the laundry powder industry. So this team has to summarize and to create a postcard related to competition policy. If you could listen to them, there was a conversation between two of the students, okay? So one of them asked to the other things about this, about competition policy, and the other one answered. And, they w and this was very creat creative, okay? Now, I'm going to show you one of the mind maps created by one of the teams, okay? So this um, mind map uh, was about 
topic a title Income Distribution and Regional Policy. As you can see, this is the central idea of this uh, lecture, and you can find other different information, historical framework, supply side, income inequality, a problem linked to European uh, integration, European regional policy, okay? So you can observe the central idea and different branches. This is another mind map created by other team, okay? In this case, this team has to create a, a mind map uh, to basic theory of economic integration. In this topic, we teach them uh, where is the main effect to impose a tariff into in a small country compared to large country. Um, of course, we analyze the uni unilateral discriminatory liberalization. For that reason, we can observe different graphs. Okay? So this is another mind map which is more original for you. This one on the, on the other one. Uh, yeah, um, to me, it's, this one to me is a more creative one because um, it captures the essential ideas and it's much more structured. So for the, I mean, in terms of pedagogy for comprehension, it's much more clear to me mm -hmm. to, to understand all the links. And so if, to me, your level of, of comprehension is much more deeper if you are able yeah. to summarize and structurate and go to the essential than if you have to write a whole um, sentences and everything. I mean, from my point of view. Uh, sometimes you want to know between red wine and white wine. Yeah. This one, kind of like I, know. I know all the different types of wine and I know kind of the countries and so it's much more developed uh -huh. schema, isn't it? This one. This and the one. other one, it just seems to be five. May I see the other one again, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oops. <laughs> this one. Hmm. I would again start with the question, how to define creativity. <laughs> yeah, so, that's it. That is a as, good question. As you said before, it's, for you it is subjective. That was a very honest... For me? Uh, you said it was yeah. subjective, so that's a very honest answer to exactly. that question, right? But I think most important would be, do the students know what your criteria for creativity is? Yeah. Is that tra transparent to them? In this case, I try to be balanced between creativity and the content included here. Mm because it depends on the topic, mm. the yeah. previous topic. So for me, uh, if I may interrupt, just for me, creativity would be their own creative input into the topic or the visual, yeah. maybe the visual aspect of yeah. what is creativity because the content is all straightforward, right? There's no creating something new. They're just summarizing what was already done. But if they integrate it in some new creative way, then I could call it creativity. Yeah, that's true. Completely agree. Okay. Uh, but I have to say that it depends on the topic, okay? For students, it's more easier to summarize this topic than the other round, because here we don't have graphs, okay? Um, a, a theoretical framework in economics, okay? But in the other round... Exactly. But I consider that there is a lot of um, text here. Okay, because um, they, ha they uh, are ab able to, with only graph, to explain the other things. Okay, but for me it was, okay, this one and the other one. Okay. Uh, now, the evaluation of this methodology, okay? First of all, the online survey results. Um, this survey was uh, answered by 30 students, that is equal to 73% of the students enrolled in the subject. Um, the feedback found was very positive. Right here you can uh, see the mean scores, okay, for the different aspects of the podcast and the mind map. 
but if we observe these results, uh, we can uh, find that our students give higher scores to the mind map compared to the podcast. Okay? More specifically, they have lower preference for podcast compared to the mind map. Okay? And look at this aspect, Podca uh, podcast preference to and mind map preference to. This aspect refers to the preference of, a stu of my students to this kind of activities compared to conventional or traditional activities. They give higher scores to this kind of activities, okay? Uh, let me see. If you remember, I asked them three open-ended questions. So I started to read what my students wrote, okay? To the questions, what will you highlight and improve about the podcast and my activity? I observe this kind of answers. I will not improve anything. I think that the podcast was a really great and useful idea to do in class. It's a really interesting way to revise the subject. It's a good idea to learn the lesson in a different way. And it's very good to do it in groups to improve for contact with the other classmates. I find this activity very interesting. I will not change anything. It is a fun way to learn. It helps us study and organize our ideas. Okay. Of course, there are negative comments, uh, okay? But I'm going to tell you that comments at the end because they are very similar. They are referred to the time. What is? 10 minutes, okay. Oh, uh, if you remember, I told you at uh, the beginning of the presentation that I wanted to see um, if there are differences by gender, okay? in their self-perceptions and experiences, okay? So this is the mean scores um, for the podcast, and this is our for uh, the uh, mind map, okay? As you can see, uh, males, uh, of course, students prefer this kind of activities, mind maps, compared to podcast, okay? But when we uh, look at the podcast activity, we observe that for several aspects, male students give higher scores compared to female students. Regarding the mind maps, we observe the reverse. Female students give higher scores compared to male students. Okay? So, we can observe a difference. Of course, we cannot generalize these results because I only have 30 students, okay? Probably I will need more uh, sample to analyze if there is a significant difference between males and females, okay? But we can observe just a little bit difference here. Now, Sorry, the title is, there is a typo, okay? Now, what happens if we compare those students who are enrolled in this course for the first time ver uh, compared to those who repeat the course because they didn't pass the exam, the final exam? I'm going to focus right here, okay? What can we observe here? Those who repeat the course give higher scores to, the, to this kind of activities compared to those who enroll this course for the first time. So this is very significant because this kind of, uh, this kind of students, those who repeat, had a bad or a negative experience in this course. Okay? So they are more motivated with this kind of activities. This is very, very, very interesting. Yeah. What is, the grade? what is the grade to fail and uh, five is the highest uh, grade? No, it's just a Likert scale. Sorry? Okay. It's a Likert scale from zero to five. Sorry. Exactly, it's not the grade or the course. I asked them different uh, questions about uh, what do you think? Uh, do you prefer this activity over conventional uh, activities? And they have to select between zero 
to five. Zero is the lowest score, and five is the highest score. And right here, I graph the mean scores, distinguishing by gender, in this case, between uh, different students, okay? Now, the indicator results, okay? We have different indicators and different teams, okay? So right here, I write the values obtained to sum all of them, okay? To summarize all of them. Uh, in terms of motivation and participation, the results are excellent. Really, really, really excellent. But, uh, of course, in terms of content uh, too, okay? But in terms of time duration of the podcast, oral fluency, and creativity and originality, we can observe differences between teams, okay? And in terms of oral fluency, we can observe differences between teams and within teams. Especially, we observe that Erasmus students and female Erasmus students and female students have a higher English level compared to the rest. Okay, for that reason, I wrote an interval right here. So to conclude this presentation, uh, some limitations of this uh, methodology. Uh, we use a small group, okay, this is a pilot study. Uh, the main idea is just to replicate it several times in different courses, okay, to uh, have a higher, uh, larger uh, sample. From the viewpoint of students, also we receive comments uh, from them just related to the time to do and to create these two activities. They told us that they need more time to create the podcast and also to create the mind map, especially because when we implemented this methodology it was in the last two practical sessions and it's a period uh, for them with, um, with several exams. Okay, so probably we need to organize uh, or have more flexible time to uh, implement these two activities. Of course, another limitation, all data uh, were self-reported, okay, because it's the experience of our students, okay, so probably maybe we need extra information, okay. And of course, the results in oral fluency in English are different within a team, okay, so we cannot observe a contagion effect, I mean, those who, ha who dominate the language uh, skills push those students with lower level uh, to improve their language skills. Just to conclude with this sentence, in terms of motivation and participation, uh, only creating one podcast, a mind map, we can find really positive effects and results, okay? But in terms of oral fluency and creativity, finding a positive effect when only one podcast and mind map is crea are created is very low, okay? So probably we will need to uh, create podcast and mind maps several times over the course to improve oral fluency and creativity and originality from my viewpoint, okay? And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. There was so much food for thought in there, and I hope you all got some takeaways from this. We have a couple of minutes for questions. Anything? Thank you very much for the inspiring ideas. Um, I have two questions. The first is the topics that you assigned to them. I'm curious to hear more examples of the topics. And the second question related to the topics is, are those topics also content-wise things that, um, is, I forgot if you said there's some final written exam, are they topics they need to also have 
understood as concepts for the final exam? All of them. Okay. All of them. Uh, we had we have 14 different topics. Okay. So I select the seventh most important topics for them. Uh, finally, this this kind of activities is just um, very helpful for them to revise for the final exam. For that reason, I select because since we had seven groups, I select the seventh most important topics. Okay. So, for example, topics, I have them right here in one of the slides. Okay. Uh, let me see. This one. These are the different topics. Okay. Um, for example, the first part is not included except the European the European Union budget. That is very important for students to know it. Okay. Trade relations between countries and the integration process, uh, the European competition policies, the regional policy, um, the monetary policy. There are a lot of things. Okay. But we select the seventh most most important. Uh, thank you for a very nice presentation. Uh, you, you mentioned at the end the topics that you're doing, and I was a little bit thinking about. Uh, you talked about that you uh, evaluate the the creativity and also the language skills, and I was like, are there also parts of the objectives that you're trying to uh, examine or assess? Because of course we have to be very clear about those kind of things. And I was wondering, is there a clear collaboration between? Like, okay, you have to be able to communicate uh, in a good way, and also about the creativity. You have to show creativity. Do you have those in your objectives as well? Thank you very much. Again, it's very subjective, but. I create a rubric. I create a rubric with different values, okay? And we can observe uh, significant differences between students, okay? I mean, I'm going to show you the values, okay? Of oral fluency or creativity. Uh, let me see. For example, this one. Or affluency, okay? I can write uh, uh, values between one and five, okay? One is if students don't stop, there are no pauses in the podcast, okay? Two, no pauses and many times litter is understood, okay? Because sometimes they, um, they speak so slowly, okay? Three, adequate breaks at times. Four is almost always uses the right stops. It's quite understandable what it is said. Five, always it is use the right pauses or stops. You always understand what is said. Okay? That's the best way to evaluate the oral fluency. But again, it's very su subjective. And the same from creativity and originality. Okay? Are your students allowed to select by themselves the topic that they would like to develop through podcast? Sorry, repeat the uh, question. Uh, are they able, your students, to select by themselves? No. No. Okay. No, no. Uh, again, it's the same for the groups. Mm -hmm. Okay? I divide it. Okay? I don't want the uh, all uh, friends in the same group. Okay, and it's the same for the topic. I decide the topic for each uh, a uh, for each a team. Okay. Last question. Okay, do the do the students have communication skills, like a course or something like that, before they make this yeah. podcast? They have because if if you want to. Um, and to assess something, uh, you, you have to deliver some kind of information, teaching, whatever. They have several presentations. Okay, they have, uh, have a presentation about the European budget. Okay, a 10-minute presentation by a student. 
by each student. Do they have in their program, bachelor or master, I don't know, a communication skills course? Yes, it's in the teaching guide. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah. it's question. in the teaching guide. For that reason, we need to include this kind of activities, okay? Of course. We have different skills, soft skills, communication skills, uh, ICT skills, many of them. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Give a round of applause.